for life I come for peace I come before you on my knees Lord hear my cry You're all I need to the ground Take this life I lay it down At the foot of the cross You gave your life You bore my shame My sins are buried in the grave Without your love seen in a, a really long time, let me also say good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> I hope and pray that your family is well as you are watching this. I know that uh, we, we've, we've kind of seen that uh, being on this being on YouTube or, or whatever platform it ends up on, uh, we're not just reaching those who are in, our, in the Otterbein Church family, but uh, all over, all, all over the place. And so I'm so Glad that you are tuning in. Uh, I'm so thankful to be able to use this technology to speak the Word of God and to give you this message that God has, has laid on my heart. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about this. Uh, we're going to be in Romans 14, which is uh, one of my favorite passages. If you have a Bible, I would strongly encourage you to grab it or uh, look it up on your phone. Uh, because we're going to kind of go through this verse by verse, um, not strictly verse by verse, but we're going to be looking at this a lot and, and kind of camping out in here this morning. Um, so I, I, I want to start off with kind of laying down a, a foundation, uh, a premise, an idea 
that I have come across in the last couple of weeks that I think is important, not just to what is going on in our country, which I, I want to talk about here in a minute, but th this idea is also important when it comes to uh, Romans 14 and what we're going to be talking about. I'd really like to discuss the idea of us coming back together. But first, let me, let me mention this. In, in reference to what is happening in our country right now, um, in our nation, cities all across, I just want, I, I, I want to express um, something from, from the gospel, that we as followers of Christ believe that in the kingdom of God, there is absolutely no room for racism. There is absolutely no room for prejudice. And in fact, when we dig into the gospel and the words of Jesus, we see that he is the answer to all of those, those kinds of dilemmas. As followers of Christ, we believe that all persons, all humans, are created in the image of God. And Jesus said, and we'll talk about this a little bit more as we get into Romans 14, but Jesus said that the greatest things that we can do is to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. And of course, as we've discussed many times in church, our neighbor is everyone. All of humanity is our neighbor. And so it is right for us as a church, and not just Otterbein, but certainly Otterbein is included in this. It is right for us as a church worldwide to stand up and, and have our voices be heard when it comes to issues of, of injustice and issues of um, inequality. And, and I say that because I know many of us are probably on uh, all over the spectrum when it comes to our opinions. And, and here's what I want to say, the, the foundation I want to lay for this morning and in, in Romans 14. I've come across this idea called, uh, I, I like to call it, um, the prison of two ideas. In other words, when we come to a, a subject or a topic, it seems that uh, political figures and the media, whatever forces are behind dr driving the information uh, that's, that flows in our country, it seems like there is this prevailing thought that it, that it has to be either one or the other. And if, you, if your opinion leans towards one way, then it is that. And if your opinion leans towards the other way, then it is that. And there's no middle ground. And I think that that is wrong. I believe scripturally we see that as wrong. We cannot be trapped in the prison of two ideas because that is what ultimately divides us. And as we'll see in Romans 14, as followers of Jesus, we need to, to have a sense of unity. And it doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that we have to all think the same and we have to all believe the same. There is great strength, as we'll talk about a little bit later, there's great strength in diversity of thought and diversity of opinion, but the strength lies in uh, in all of us continuing to live in a in a bond of love and peace and unity in the midst of all of our disagreeing opinions. And so we can't. I, I can stand here before you and say, because I because I don't want to be trapped in the prison of two ideas. I can stand before you and say, I believe in the ideals of the Black Lives Matter movement. And, that does, and in saying that, that does not mean that I support the riots and the, the looting and the violence, because they're not the same. I support the protesters. I support anyone's right in America to protest, because not only is it one of our rights, but it is a way to, to cause change. It is something, a way that we can express ourselves. But in saying that, I am not supporting the rioting, the looting, and the violence, because they're not the same. And you can use this with, with a whole myriad of topics. We cannot get trapped in the prison of two ideas, because that's when we become divided. And I see that that is a great possibility when it comes to us coming back together, reopening the church building. Now, I'm not saying reopening the church. 
because the church never closed. We are the church, and we, I, I think if anything, the, this coronavirus pandemic has shown that the church cannot be stopped. Because even in the midst of not being able to gather together, we adjusted, we adapted, and we got the message out there. And even though we couldn't uh, be face-to-face, -face, we called each other. We sent text messages, we sent emails, we sent letters. We still kept up communication. We did driveway visits, which were delightful. Um, we did parades. We still maintained the sense of community and belongingness. We adapted to the situation, even though we could not be together. So the church itself is not reopening. We are just considering how do we reopen the church building? How do we reopen gathering together in the same space? And the thing is, is that each of us is going to have a different opinion on how, when, and in what manner that should happen. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Because in the freedom we have in Christ to have differing opinions, we still need to maintain a sense of peace and love and unity. And that, again, that doesn't mean that we have to just have, uh, that we all have to think the same, but in the midst of our uh, differing opinions, we need to have unity. And so that's what, we're, what we want to talk about this morning. So I want to lay out uh, three sections in, in Romans 14. The first one is the problem. The second one is the reason that it's a problem. And the third one is the solution to the problem. And so, if, again, if you have your Bible, I, I'd encourage you to just follow along with me. Now, now we're going to read all of Romans 14, but I'm just going to read, uh, the, the, I'm going to divide it up into those three sections. So here we go. This is section one, the problem. I'll start in, uh, in 13, 13, just to give us a little bit of context. Let us walk with decency as in the daylight, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual impurity or promiscuity, not in quarreling or jealousy, but put on the, the Lord Jesus Christ and make no plans to satisfy the fleshly desires. Here we go, Romans 14. Accept anyone who is weak in faith, but don't argue about doubtful issues. One person believes he may eat anything, but one who is weak eats only vegetables. One who eats must not look down on the one who does not eat, and the one who does not eat must not criticize the one who does, because God has accepted him. Who are you to criticize another's household slave? Before his own Lord he stands or falls. And he will stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person considers one day to be above another. Someone else considers every day to be the same. Each one must be fully convinced in his mind. Whoever observes the day, observes it in honor of the Lord. Whoever eats for the Lord, who, excuse me, whoever eats, eats for the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. And whoever does not eat, it is for the Lord that he does not eat, yet he thanks God. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we belong to Christ. Christ died and came to life for, for this, that he might rule over both the dead and the living. The problem is, is that we all will have differing opinions on how we should come back together, uh, much like the people that Paul was writing to. Now, they were, their opinions were differing on the matters of food and holy days, again, just to have the context of the, of the passage. But the principles here definitely transfer over to what, to what we're talking about. Uh, so, so they had differing opinions on food and holy days, and Paul says that that's okay. Uh, he, he, he says in verse 6, Whoever observes the day observes it, for the, 
observes it for the honor of the Lord. Whoever eats, eats for the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. And whoever does not eat, it is for the Lord that he does not eat, yet he thanks God. You know, we're all going to have different thoughts and opinions about how we should come back together, when we should come back together. Some say we should have been gathering weeks ago, and others are going to say we should wait a couple more weeks until we gather. Some say we should, everyone needs to wear masks. Some says, some say we don't need to wear masks. Some will want to handshake and hug and get, and when we get together, and others are going to want to keep away from everyone. All of it is okay. All of it is good. We have the freedom in Jesus. We have the freedom in Christ to express our faith in different ways from each other. And they're all okay. My encouragement to you would be, when we get together, if you feel it's safe for you, then come. If you want to wear a mask, wear it. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear it. If you feel it's not safe for you to come, then don't come. If you feel it's safe to hug people, to handshake, uh, you know, to, to have that kind of contact, then do it. That's your expression of love for the people of our church and an expression of love to the Lord. If you feel that it's not okay to handshake, to hug, to have contact, then don't. It's all good. It's all fine. Verse 5 says that each one must be fully convinced in his own mind. So if you feel strongly one way or the other, then that's okay. Express that. Live that out in your faith in Jesus. The problem comes when our expressions of faith clash with one another, when our opinions and our thoughts clash with each other. And it's, it's, it's really cool the way that Paul puts this. He says, look, whatever you do, it's for service to the Lord. Whether you eat uh, meat or, or not, you know, you thank God for that. Whether you observe one day or another, you do it in honor of the Lord. So with all of our differing opinions, they're all different expressions of how we want to love each other and serve each other. For those who think that we should have been gathering weeks ago, it's because that we want that fellowship. We want to have the community back together. But for those who think we should wait a couple more weeks, that's out of a love and protection for everyone in our, in our church, in our congregation. And both are okay. The problem comes when they, when they clash. All these ideas are about service and love to God. And, but, but Paul says here, he goes on to verse 10, or he goes on in verse 10, but you, why do you criticize your brother? Or you, why do you look down on your brother or sister? And the idea that's being, uh, uh, that Paul is, is writing about here is the same, uh, the same idea as when Jesus said, do not judge or you will be judged. It's this idea of a uh, big long word, censoriousness. And we could do a whole sermon, probably a whole sermon series on just that. Uh, but for right now, let's just say that censoriousness, this idea of criticizing, looking down on, is, is just that. You look down on another because of their differing opinion, or in this case, their differing expression of faith in Jesus than yours. But here's the thing. When we look down on each other and criticize each other, we pass swift, uninformed, unloving, and ungenerous judgments. And we have forgotten that if we speak ill or think ill of someone else, a brother and sister in Christ, at the same time we are speaking ill of the Lord whose name we each 
bear. And so in these differing opinions, the problem is, is that sometimes they clash. In the idea of us coming back together, we're going to have clashing ideas. That's the problem. Uh, we've been apart and everyone has different, different thoughts and opinions on how, when, and in what manner we come back together. And the reason that it's a problem is, because, is, is, is worth talking about. The reason that it's a problem, moving on to Romans 14, verse 13, is this. Therefore, let us no longer criticize one another. Instead, decide never to put a stumbling block or a pitfall in your brother's way. I know I am persuaded by the Lord that nothing is unclean in itself. Still, to someone who considers a thing to be unclean, to that one it is unclean. So Paul is expressing his opinion, but saying someone who thinks differently, that's, that's okay. For if your brother is hurt by what you eat, you are no longer walking according to love. Do not destroy that one Christ died for by what you eat or what you think. Therefore, do not let your good be slandered for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Whoever serves Christ in this way is acceptable to God and approved by men. So the problem we have differing opinions. The reason that it's a problem is because our differing opinions can sometimes lead us to criticize or think poorly about one another. And I, th <laughs> I think it's safe to say, again, in, in this polarizing atmosphere that we, that we are in, we cannot be trapped in this prison of two ideas that if you wear a mask, that, that's because you don't have any faith. And if you don't wear a mask, you just don't care. That's not what it's about. That, 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 is, that is being censorious. <laughs> that is passing judgments on each other and violating and forgetting about the greatest command that we are to love one another. And so when Jesus says the greatest thing you can do is to love God and to love your neighbor, we should always be looking out for ways to love one another. And, and, and this idea of putting a stumbling block in, in front of someone's path, this idea of a stumbling block um, is, is important here because it's kind of the, the crux of the whole, the whole reason that this problem is a problem is because of this right here, putting a stumbling block in front of your brother or sister. If your brother or sister in Christ is hurt by something that you say or do or something you do causes them to sin, then you are not walking according to love. And as followers of Christ, we should be looking out for ways to love one another. Sacrificing your opinion, your rights for the sake of loving a brother or sister in Christ is one of the greatest acts that you can do. And again, this does not mean that you cannot have an opinion about something. It just means that possibly for the time being, we voluntarily put our opinions, our rights, our thoughts, our uh, selves aside for the sake of lifting up and building up someone else. Putting a stumbling block in front of a brother or sister in Christ is by what we say or what we do is not the way of Jesus. It is not walking according to love. And I love in verse 17 where Paul says, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. The kingdom of God is not these earthly things. The kingdom of God is not made up of whether we should gather in this manner or this manner, whether we should wear masks or not wear masks. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so the reason this is a problem is because it can cause us to put a stumbling block in front of each other. So the solution is to live out the idea 
of loving one another. Verse 19, so then we must pursue peace, excuse me, so then we must pursue what promotes peace and what builds up one another. Do not tear down God's work because of food. Everything is clean, but it is wrong for a man to cause stumbling by what he eats. It is a noble thing not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that makes your brother stumble. Do you have a conviction? Keep it to yourself before God. The man who does not condemn himself by, by what he approves is blessed. And so the solution, we who are followers of Christ should promote, do everything to promote peace and build up one another. It is a noble thing to put yourself, your thoughts, your opinions, your rights, to put yourself aside for the sake of another brother or sister in Christ. He says, it is a noble thing not to do anything that makes your brother stumble. That is living out the idea of loving each other. It is wrong to cause another to stumble because of your opinion on earthly things. Again, When he says here, um, verse 20, do not tear down God's work because of food. Don't tear down what God is doing in someone's life because of these earthly issues. The kingdom of God is so much greater than that. And in fact, the, the, the world looking in on the church is so much greater than the the fact that the the world is looking at us. And friends, believe me, right now, we are under a microscope. I mean, if we were under, we have always been under the microscope. But now, especially because we have been apart, and now that we're coming back together, people are going to be looking as to how we react to one another, how we interact with one another. As followers of Christ, we need to be different than the rest of the world. We need to make it to be purposeful in making Christ known in what we do and how we interact with one another. And that doesn't just go for when we come back uh, together in the church. That includes the way that we interact with each other on social media or in public or wherever. We need to be different. We need to show the world that we are different, that following Jesus is something so much greater than anything this world has to offer. And the the passage that starts this whole, uh, the, the end of Romans, Uh, So Romans 14 is a part of kind of a big diatribe of Romans 12, 13, 14, 15, and and, and to the end. And and this is the verse that starts it out. Romans 12. I'm sure we all know this verse. Therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. Verse 2. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We as followers of Christ cannot look like in our interactions with each other, in our interactions with with anyone, we cannot look like the rest of the world. God calls us to be different. He calls us to be different, to seek the kingdom of God first. And so, my friends, as we think about gathering back together, we are going to have different opinions on what that should look like. But we cannot allow our different opinions 
to define us. We can't be trapped in the prison of two ideas that if you wear a mask, if you don't wear a mask, then this or that. We have to be above that. <laughs> As followers of Christ, we have to be greater than that. We have to put ourselves aside for the sake of serving one another in love. And so I encourage you, I encourage you. Personally, I cannot wait to get back together. I can't wait to get our community back together and worship together in in the same room and not over a a screen. Although I, I have totally enjoyed, I've totally loved doing our Facebook live worships and Frankly, I think that kind of stuff should, should continue after, even after we get back together. But, but um, when, we, when we get back together, we cannot allow our differing opinions to, to define us. We have to be greater than that. So, again, I encourage you, if you feel it is safe for you and your family to come on the, the Sundays, that, the services that we have laid out, I encourage you to come. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, that's fine too. Let's not spend our, the time that we have together criticizing one another because we do or we don't wear masks, don't wear masks, do this or don't do that. Let us live in the bond of love. Let us show the world the love of Jesus through our actions. Let me pray. Father God, I thank you so very much um, for this technology and the, the opportunity that is afforded us for your word to go forward, for us to continue to preach, for us to continue to worship together, even though we are not together. God, I pray that as we look forward to the next few weeks, coming back together, starting our services once again, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would give us a a sense of unity in the midst of all of our different opinions, our different thoughts. I pray that you would give our church a bond of love and a bond of unity. I pray, God, for what is going on in our country right now, and I pray that we as the church, Otterbein and the church worldwide, that we would be able to stand up together and say that that everyone is made in the image of God and to believe that someone is greater than another simply on on earthly uh, outer features is wrong. I pray that we would be able, as your word says, to stand up for those who are helpless, that we would be a voice of love and calm and reason, saying that all men and women are created equal. I thank you, Lord Jesus. And I, I, I pray that your spirit would just move in our hearts. And I thank you that in the weeks to come, we will gather back together. And it is in your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. I, I pray that you have a blessed day. May our Lord be with you.